Deus, meu Deus. Deus. So, you know, I'm just checking my iPhone and I see that you sent it. Thank you. No problem. Now I got to open them. Ah, yes. The first one opened. Okay, good. And the second one opened. Great. Thank you. No problem. I, I really, know. I really rely not only on my notes, but it's so important to be able to go back and see it. So it's six thirty, and I do see we have our guests here. So if you're ready, we'll get going. Um, okay, maybe we'll just. How many committee members are present? Oh, that's a good question. Give me one second. Uh, Anthony, Michelle, Kim, Selway, uh, Christina Davis, I believe Elizabeth Ashby. I think that's everyone I see right. Oh, Marco just joined. Yeah, I saw that. Oh, and Sarah too. Okay, thank you so much. Why don't you talk about how the public can participate and then we'll get started or? Of course. So if it's your first time at any of our Community Board 8 Zoom committee meetings, you'll oh. notice that you're muted and you cannot unmute yourself at this time. Um, the way that you will engage during the meeting is you will uh, use the raise hand feature that you can find at the bottom of your screen under the reactions button. If you click more, if you can't find the reactions button, you'll find a button that says reactions and you hit the little raise hand button. Um, you only wanna hit it once because if you hit it multiple times, you, you'll lower your hand back down. And um, if you are having any technical difficulties with Zoom, um, you can always chat uh, myself during the meeting and I'll be able to help you with that. Uh, we won't take questions through the chat though. So you'll have to use the raise hand feature. Um, whenever the time comes after the first applicant gives their presentation. Thank you, Will. Um, with that, we're going to get started. This is the February meeting of the Landmarks Committee of Community Board 8. We have two applications before us. We are here to vote on the context and appropriateness of the applications within their respective historic districts. I think both are the Upper East Side Historic District tonight. Um, we will hear from the applicant, then from the public, then we will go into executive session and formulate a resolution for each of the applications. These resolutions will be presented to our full board. Will that date, it's a week from this Wednesday for the full board? Uh, full board is the 17th of February. Yeah, so it's a week from this coming Wednesday. So we're, with that, we're gonna start. The first application is 45 East 70th Street, the Upper East Side Historic District, a neo-French classical residence designed by Imar Emery for Arthur S. Lehman. The application is for installation of new marble clad steel Juliet balconies. That language might be a little wrong, but if the applicant is here, it's um, Ernst Architects, is that the name of the firm or? So Todd, are you, you're gonna be the one giving the presentation, right? And you'll yes. just need to, there you go. Um, I forget to say it, but whenever we call on you, um, when you raise your hand, you'll just have to confirm unmuting on your screen. So you'll see a little prompt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, well, just to backtrack because I, what, who is the um, architect who's presenting? Uh, my name's Todd Ernst. I'm the architect of uh, record for this application. Oh, okay. I it was a little okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I, I'm assuming that you're going to do a screen share on the drawings. Um, I'm not sure I know how to do that. Uh, I think the drawings uh, were submitted. Is it possible for you guys to look at them? 
Yeah, I can. Will, can you can do the screen, screen share. share? Okay, Will will do the screen share, and maybe you could speak to them once he's. Um, yeah, sure. I'd appreciate that. Thank you. Great. Thank you. It just takes me one second to put them up on the screen. All right. Does this look correct? Oh, that's it. Thank you, Will. Okay. So uh, I'll just give everybody a little overview. Um, the focus of the project is uh, the rear yard area of this house at uh, 45 East 70th Street. And um, none of the work is visible from a public thoroughfare. And, and we already have a landmarks application for the majority of the work, which was approved at staff level, which is the re replacement of the rear yard paving uh, the perimeter fencing with a, a perimeter wall and the installation of a fountain at the back of the yard. So uh, Landmarks wanted me to, uh, our, our staffer at Landmarks wanted me to present two additional components here that they felt the commissioner should see and uh, opine on uh, which is, as you can see in this photo, the replacement of uh, two metal balconies flanking a metal staircase uh, in the middle of this image. And our design is to replace these elements in uh, structural steel uh, balconies and stair, but clad in a, a French limestone that is sympathetic with both the front and rear facades of the house. So that's the number one part of what we're proposing as part of this um, review with the community board. And I do appreciate your time for this um, and dealing with my lack of technical expertise in presenting in this format. Uh, the other component in addition to the two balconies and the stair replacement is uh, we would like to propose adding a two foot high wooden lattice uh, on top of the perimeter brick wall, which is six feet high, which we already have approved. And uh, that can be seen in our drawings. Uh, if Will, you could scroll forward a little bit for me. That's a historic tax photo of the front of the house. That's a photo I took recently of the front of the house. And another little uh, nuance or uh, detail of this job is uh, back in 2009, a prior applicant uh, filed and got approved uh, the restoration of the facade in the addition of a rooftop, um, essentially like a penthouse. And along with that, the commissioner's uh, required something called an MOU, a uh, memorandum of understanding that the house would be maintained in perpetuity. And I think a big part of their review of my application is to make sure this um, MOU is, is being followed, which as evidenced by my photographs, it is. I mean, the new, the current owners are taking excellent care of the house. And uh, the commissioners will see that when I make my presentation to them. Um, and the facade was restored extremely well from what had been done to it previously, prior to 2009. And you, you could move forward, Will. 
this is our plot plan and location plan. And uh, we're mid block, we're surrounded by taller buildings. So uh, there are no uh, vistas or visual alleys uh, that would, that will show our work in the rear yard. So it's totally uh, beyond view from the public thoroughfare. And the red rectangle shows the area where we're going to replace the two balconies in the center staircase to the rear yard. You can go to the next one. Uh, and then these, these photos uh, top left show the oblique, like the most oblique angle you could see from a thoroughfare in the rear yard is not visible. Um, and then we went to adjacent buildings to take photos of the rooftop addition, which uh, is clad in a GFRC, which is a kind of a faux stone to match the limestone of the facade. And the ugly roof, you don't see, it's, it's actually a liquid applied Kemper roof. But uh, again, this is so discreet that it's not visible from a public thoroughfare except marginally through the stone balustrade at the front facade. So it's consistent with the MOU. You can go to the next one, Will. This, this shows other components of the MOU that I'll need to show to the commissioners that before there were through the wall air conditioners that were cut through the French limestone. And those have all been removed. The stone has been keyed back in with matching in-kind stone and the metalwork has been restored and the house visually has been brought back to its original stature and character. You can go to the next one, Will. And these are, uh, this, the top left photo is another photo of the rear facade of the balconies to be removed and the staircase. Um, and then there's some details of those elements in the top middle and top right photo. And then uh, the bottom left photo shows the current rear yard, which is uh, covered in a bluestone paving. And then the uh, latticework fence that's currently surrounding the rear yard, which is in bad condition, in which we're replacing. And then the last photo is a close up of the balcony, um, one of the two balconies to be removed. You can go to the next photo, Will. Thanks. And these are overall photos of the rear yard. And uh, as I had said in the beginning of the presentation, this lattice fence will be replaced with a six foot high decorative brick wall. And what we're uh, presenting to you tonight, which you'll see in our drawings in a rendering is the addition of a wood lattice top on top of the, our stone coping, uh, which essentially recreates the effect of what you see in the top right photo between the two corbelled pilasters. Um, but again, this fence currently is in bad shape and we're replacing it. And then the two lower photos show more uh, detail of the rear yard. And also it shows the context of the rear yard, which is the rear facades of taller uh, pre-war uh, multifamily apartment buildings. So we're kind of uh, down in this yard is in a kind of well of what they call the uh, donut of the block or the negative space. And then, uh, Will, you can go to the next one. Uh, more details of the existing. And it's, you know, there's nothing great about what you see in the bottom left two photos or the center, bottom left and center. We're going to be uh, replacing all this kind of industrial metalwork uh, with uh, decorative finishes and the stone that we've specified is also a French limestone, uh, which is similar to travertine marble. So it'll be very sympathetic with the house and with the 
um, design style of the original architect. You can go to the next one. This is uh, our uh, demolition plan, which has been submitted to the building department and approved uh, with the exception of the two balconies and the stair and the, uh, the um, fence top. And you can go to the next one, Will. This is the proposed design, uh, which shows the, in plan, the two new stone balconies with stone balustrades flanking the new stone staircase, and then a decorative stone paving uh, in the center of the rear yard, and then the fountain at the north side or the back of the rear yard, and then the surrounding six foot high wall, uh, which is clad in brick with a stone coping. And the notes highlighted in red indicate our request to put a two foot lattice on top of the wall. Uh, and in this district, an eight foot wall is permitted by code. And uh, so we're uh, complying with building code, uh, FDNY code and zoning code. It's really a matter of aesthetics and uh, the consideration of the community board and the commissioners. You can keep going, Will. This is a, a rendering of a plan view of the yard. And uh, again, it's, it's a little, it's not the most artistic rendering, but it illustrates the concept and some of the, the feel of the colors of the limestone. And the, the trunk thing you see in the upper left hand of the rendering, that's just a tree. It's not rendered properly. So I don't want anyone to think that we're erecting like a smokestack in the backyard or something. And I apologize for the, the primitive rendering. But you can see the note on the right side that where we ask for the two foot lattice topper. And uh, just so that it's clear, it's, it doesn't wrap all the way around. It's just flanking on the east and west sides of our yard. You can go to the next one, Will. This is uh, our drawing that compares the existing condition on the top of the rear, it shows the rear facade and then the bottom section. And again, none of this is visible from the public thoroughfare and none of this is really, uh, I, you know, I guess this is my opinion, it's not out of character, um, but uh, that's, that's um, subjective. Um, you can go to the next one, Will. This is another rendering somewhat primitive that shows the concept of the balconies, the stair and the lattice that we're asking for approval on. And you can go to the next one. These are what we call elevation sections. Uh, so the top one is the existing and the bottom one is the proposed and Again, in profile, it's not really that much different. It's actually, you know, uh, very similar in profile. You can go to the next one. This is a perspective view. Again, that's not a smokestack. That bizarre thing is a tree. Um, and it's just a, a perspective rendering showing our proposal. And you can go to the next one. This is a section uh, existing and proposed looking in the other direction, looking west. So we can kind of just go by this. It's kind of repetitive. Another view looking west with the rendering. You can go move again. Thank you. And this is just a continuation of, of the sections. And then tree is rendered a little better in this one. You can see it, it looks more like a tree. And then the next one. So is that it, Will? It seems that way. I, okay, I that's, I that's pretty comprehensive of what, what we're proposing to you tonight. And um, 
you know, again, it's, I think it, what, what we're looking for is, and the commissioners are looking for is more of a, a check-in on the compliance with the MOU, but also that what we're doing is, you know, visually appropriate given the statics of the existing house. And, and that's really, you know, our presentation and um, available for any questions you may have. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Will, is there anyone from the public um, present? This is just a reminder, if you are from the public and you want to comment on this application, you'll need to find the raise hand button um, under the reactions button on your screen. If you are calling in from the phone, it is star nine to raise your hand. I see the Friends of the Upper East Side has a question. Great, thank you. Hi, this is Laura Saking from Friends of the Upper East Side. I have a quick question uh, about the proposal. The, well, the, the brick wall was approved at staff level? Yes, the six foot high brick wall. Uh, do, Will, do I have to raise my hand? No, 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 we can hear you. Just don't okay. mute yourself and we'll be able to keep hearing you. So yes, uh, that's an excellent question. Uh, and uh, yes, the brick wall, uh, the six foot high with the stone coping was approved at staff level. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Are there did, any other questions? Will, did um, friends want to add any other comment or is that it? Uh, they, they muted themselves. So Laura, if you wanted to comment anything else. Uh, no, that's, that's all for now. Thank you. Thank you. Um, anyone else from the public will? Giving a couple more seconds to see if anyone else raises their hand. But no, I'm not seeing anyone. Okay, we can go to the committee and you might do um, the committee members in alphabetical order. Okay. So I'll start at the top of the alphabet uh, with Elizabeth Ashby. So give me one second to find Elizabeth and we'll unmute her. Elizabeth? Am I unmuted now? You are. Okay. Uh, yes, this is not visible from the public way, so I apply lower standards. Uh, <coughs> I think it's a, a very handsome proposal. Um, and because it's not visible from the public way, m my objection is that I feel that in this particular style and time, decorative wrought iron is the more appropriate. This has too much masonry, from, in my opinion. However, I, I think it's handsome and I won't oppose it because nobody can see it. Elizabeth. Um, so next we'll move to Gail Barron. Gail, just unmute. Yeah. I have a question regarding uh, the balconies, the existing balconies. Uh, were they original and are they the same or similar to uh, the front facade? The uh, Gail, again, that's an excellent question. And it, we, we have no record of them being original. So I can't say if they were or they were not. But I think like Elizabeth had said, uh, you know, the metalwork is a common detail on this type of neoclassical facade. Um, although in the front does have a fair amount of decorative metalwork and grillage. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, as far as it being original, you don't know. And it appears that they, to, to me, based on my site reviews and surveys that the yard had, the yard and the rear facade had been redone uh, over time. And actually probably every time it was redone, it was done at a lesser quality. Um, and also, you, as you see the rendering in the photos of the back of the house, it's not nearly as decorative and ornate as the front of the house. Mm 
Mm -hmm. uh, they actually didn't even use limestone in the upper portion of the rear facade. They used brick. So uh, again, uh, it, I think what we're doing, again, this is subjective. I think it's consistent and uh, you know, fits historically for a rear facade. I wouldn't propose such a thing on the front uh, when it would be visible. Because uh, I think it would it, that would change the character, public character of the house. Thank you. I also had a question regarding the color of the brick for the proposed brick wall. Is that compatible the same color as the brick on the upper level? It is of the rear facade. That's an excellent question. Also, uh, it's it's like a taupey colored brick with some red in it. Uh, and it's modeled, so it's not like a very, it's not an extremely uniform brick. So it looks, frankly, it looks very antique. It looks like an antique handmade brick, uh, which you'll see the rear, you know, the rear facade is like a weathered brick. And that's our goal is to make it look consistent and not be, you know, too, too much of a contrast. And then the extra two feet on the wall of the wood fencing. Yes. How, how is that design actually compatible with the rest of, of what you're you're doing in the rehab? Uh, well, the the main thing that makes it compatible is is the paint color and the treatment. So it'll be an antiqued painted finish. It won't be a solid painted color there'll be a base coat of a darker color. And then there's a dry brush technique over the top of that, which creates a modeled effect. So it doesn't look like, uh, you know, it's a uniform, uh, perfectly new finish. It, it has a kind of weathered effect and that will also soften its impact in its contrast to its the surrounding uh, brick and stone coping. Thank you. You did say that um, the DOB had not approved the the two the design of the two balconies and the stairs. Was that because it wasn't submitted yet, or did they have an issue? They they can't approve an element uh, that's that's not approved by Landmarks first. Okay. It's it's just a it's their technical procedure. Landmarks is the gatekeeper for these types of things. But according to uh, code, which is their, in their wheelhouse, this is all code compliant. Great. Well, thank you. I, I think it is a handsome design. Like Elizabeth, I probably prefer wrought iron, but it is just a matter of individual taste. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the presentation. Sure. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, after Gail is Michelle Birnbaum. Thank you. Yeah, um, so looking at this, I have a couple of questions and I have an overall point of view. My overall point of view is I don't think this is as attractive as the iron. Um, I would like to see the iron there. I think this looks very heavy and it looks superimposed to me into the space. So I am not happy with it. Uh, let me ask you in your presentation, there was a photo of um, like cellar steps. Is that under the balcony? Yeah, is that okay? So now what is that exactly? Does that open up? Are there stairs under there? Or? Well, uh, that's an excellent question, Michelle. And <laughs> really what's under there currently is air conditioning equipment and the stair is, there to access that equipment because there's no way to access it from within the house. And that equipment is now obsolete and it's going to be removed. And you can see there's a decorative metal grill in the left side of this rendering under the balcony. And that, that decorative grill will provide access for maintenance of that area way under there mm -hmm. where the equipment is being removed. Okay, so it won't have any other function. Now the brick, the brick wall is six feet high and the lattice above it adds what, another two feet? That is correct. 
So you have an eight foot wall there? Yes. Now, um, when you're raising it to eight feet, the buildings that are behind this, you had a shot of it looking at the building in the back. Maybe you want to put that one up, mm -hmm. but whatever. Is that above somebody's first story windows? In other words, how does that, the whole thing was lattice before so that there was light coming through and air. But now if it's going to be brick, how does it affect uh, the windows of the other building that are behind it? And is the lattice shorter than the now going to be eight foot total wall? That, that's also an excellent question. And uh, we only are asking for the lattice on the east and west sides. Right. In the back wall is primarily uh, to the coping level is six feet tall. So it's actually lower than the code required or code maximum wall height. And we do have one section in the center that does protrude up a little bit, but the net result is that our wall is lower. The back wall yeah. is lower. Mm -hmm. And the side walls will be higher than the existing. Have you have your neighbors actually, addressed this or have you told your neighbors? Um, actually, if you look at the photo, the bottom left photo in this um, presentation, it's actually higher than eight feet currently. Uh, you can see that it's a real hodgepodge and there's the essentially like a five or six foot section. Then there's a two and a half foot section. And then there's even an additional two foot section on top of that. So I think that that wall ends up being about 10 feet high. So ours will actually be lower. And so the net result will be more transparency for those neighbors. Okay. Now the stairs uh, that you've put the, um, the stonework, um, the stairs are currently metal. That's I correct. have, I have no objection to you changing them to the limestone, you know, as you're proposing, mm -hmm. but in terms of the stone that's flanking the actual steps, I just think this is a very, very heavy look for that uh, rear yard. What's the dimension of that rear yard? Uh, let me just look at my plans. One second. It's, it's 40 feet, seven and three quarter inches wide and 28 feet, five and three, eight, three eighths of an inch deep. Or it's yeah. actually like Say, say 20, 30 feet deep. Yeah, sorry, 30 feet. So it's roughly 40 by 30? Yeah. Okay. It's actually pretty big when, you, when you're standing yeah. in it because the house is, it's more like a double wide compared to a more narrow townhome. Yeah. I recognize that this is not visible from the public way, but to me, it's just out of keeping and I would be happier with the iron and especially because it also refers to the front of the house. So those are my comments anyway. Thank you very much for the presentation. Okay, thank you. Thanks for listening. Thanks, Thanks Michelle. Um, next will be Alita and Jane, I just wanna let you know that the phone ringing in the background. We I know, sorry, sorry. It's okay. I know. I should put myself, I can't, I'll put myself on mute. Alita. Okay, thanks, Will. Thanks, Jane. Um, I have to agree with my colleagues that the wrought iron is a much more appropriate feeling, delicate, interesting look than the, uh, the marble or the limestone would be, um, especially from your drawings. I don't know about an eight foot tall fence. You have a, it's almost like a little mini Versailles with the pattern stonework and the plantings and the size of it compared to the neighborhood. Um, I don't know, I learned a terrible lesson with um, a property in another historic district and the rear yard. And while this is nothing like that, it matters even if it's not visible and it is visible, um, I guess, to the people who live behind it. So, um, even though I guess they don't count in the scheme of things for this, but I really would prefer to see uh, the iron work. Thank you. 
Yeah, Sleep. and and I I understand your concerns, and uh, you know I don't totally disagree. I mean, it's it's very valid to have a more, uh, you know, kind of uh, lacy, transparent, uh, sort of uh, rendition of these of the balconies and stair, uh, but. Again, for the neighbors who do look down on this from the adjacent buildings, at least this is just a grade level and it's not a treatment that goes up the back of the house. So the fact that it is a heavy element and it's at grade, it'll probably minimize the, that kind of bulk and in, in sort of mass that I think everyone's concerned about. You're right to that to the extent that it it's much closer to the ground and not quite as visible. But there is something to be said for a consistency of a building such as this that's notable for its history and for its size and um, and it's a beautiful building and it's a shame to mar it even if it is in the back with something that doesn't feel appropriate for the nature of the building. So. Um, I, I understand, I think, the reasons for it. And the work back there really is beautiful, that stonework on the ground. It just is something that would work, it seems. And now you've heard from four of us, and we all have the same idea. I can't obviously speak for anybody else that the metal work would make a difference. And just because it's in the back doesn't mean it's not something that we should, um, that we should uh, um, have an opinion about. No, I, I, I understand. Better. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you, Alita. Thanks, Jane. Um, Jane, I, I do want to point out um, Lo from Carnegie Hill Neighbors uh, was having problems raising his hand. And also Jane Schwartz is another member of the public who just raised her hand. And so maybe she was having the same problem. Do you want to go to them? Why don't we go or? through all the members of the committee first and um, okay. go, then we can go back to Lo and the public. Thank you. Perfect. Uh, so the next uh, member of the committee is Sarah Chu. Hi. Um, thank you for this um, very thorough and very transparent presentation. Um, I was a little bit confused at what's on the other side <laughs> of the rear yard. Does the rear yard abut the building? Um, the property line and like and the building uh, behind it or does that building also have a rear yard the, that sarah that's an excellent question uh the building directly behind us also has a rear yard okay. which i think is at least 30 feet away uh-huh and traditionally, how have those two rear yards um, interacted? Um, were they ever, um, were they always separate properties or historically did, um, just because the, the, the fencing, the, the original fencing is so um, transparent, see-through, that, um, that it, it seems like uh, there would be a lot of engagement with um, with the other properties, and I was wondering if there was any history there. Uh, none that I know of. The the what we were able to find on um, you know the historical record of the house, and even through landmarks, didn't really indicate anything like that. Um, I know there's some blocks in Manhattan where it's a communal rear yard, like a park. Um, but I don't think this would be like that because it's surrounded by a lot of larger uh, like co-op and condo buildings. Uh, mm -hmm. Those communal yards are, are all uniform size, you know, one, two, three family dwellings that share a common yard. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Great, great. That's exactly um, what I um, wanted to get a better sense of. So I can understand um, wanting to go with masonry if the applicants um, would like more privacy in the backyard. 
and the design itself is um, is lovely. Um, I do think that in comparison with the ironwork, that um, my preference is for the ironwork, and in particular, I really like the little Juliet balconies. I'm I'm glad that in the new design that that um, half circle shape is preserved. Um, but there's just something um, so adorable about the way the um, the iron fencing is done there. Uh, but uh, I I agree with Michelle that it does feel like a much heavier design than the ironwork. But I don't think that um, unless we hear something uh, significant from the public, I don't think that I would oppose it. Thank you. Thank you. Hmm. Thanks, Sarah. Next is Anthony Cohn. Hi. Uh, good evening. I have um, some comments and questions. Uh, first, Todd, uh, which, which French limestone have you selected? Uh, the technical term for it is called beige Hauteville. Oh, a Hauteville. Yes. Nice limestone. Okay. Just curious. Um, this is a lovely building. It is restrained. It's delicate. The facade, it, the exterior, the front of the building is, is actually fabulous. All of the detail is sort of, is kind of suppressed, uh, but very present. And it, it's wonderfully flat. Um, and um, uh, Amar Embury was an excellent architect uh, who had the bad luck um, to lose pretty much all of his practice uh, in the Great Depression. Um, and this is really, this is a really good building. And that's why I'm so disappointed in, the, in what you're doing here. And I'll tell you why. Um, I agree with everyone who has said they prefer the metal balconies. And there are a number of reasons why. Um, I think the metal balconies are actually original. Um, they're close in character to the one on the very front of the house. Um, and, I, and I also think that one of the things that is charming about them as metal balconies is that they are in fact elliptical. Um, they're not semicircular, they're elliptical, which means they hug a little closer to the house itself. And among the number of things that seem not quite right about turning them into stone is first of all, the stone balcony, the stone Juliet balconies are cantilevered off of the building. Stone doesn't want a cantilever. You could have a bracket that supported it, or you could do something. So it seemed like it was in fact really stone rather than metal covered with stone. Mm -hmm. Secondly, they're semicircular. So they project in a kind of, I think a kind of awkward way into the garden. And thinking about it just now, um, masonry balconies like this probably would have been in fact rectangular rather than curved. Finally, I think the detail of the cap rail, first of all, the base is too small, but the detail of the cap rail is, it's inappropriate. This is a really well detailed building by a really good classically trained architect. And that skinny little handrail just doesn't cut it. Mm -hmm. um, I think that just sort of going back to the balance between the, um, the metal and the stone is that um, the metal balconies, Juliet balconies and also the, the one in the front don't detract from the kind of planarity of the facades. And so it seems as though these kind of protrude, stone protrusions 
uh, sort of work against the, the the personality of the building. So that's maybe too much architecture talk uh, between no, architects. I, I understand for what you're saying. Um, can we just hold? Can you finish your comments, Anthony? Yes, and Jane. We'll I move promise on I to will. The next committee member. Okay. Um, in fact, you. I might actually be done. I am done. Well, thank you, Anthony. Hi, Anthony, I appreciate your comments. I think they're very astute comments, and I'll. I'll take them into take them to heart and contemplating maybe adjusting some details. Yeah. And talking to the client. Thank you. Thank you. So, Will, Anthony. we can go to the next committee member. Um, let me just check to see if Harrison had to drop off for a second, oh. if he's back. Um, but if not, then we'll skip over him for a second and move on to Marco. Uh, thank you. Will, can you put the other picture of the RIAR? Which one? The existing, the existing RIAR. That one, that one. No, no, the other one. No, no, the, the other one. You just pass. Oh, just pass it? Yeah. Oh. Is this the one you're looking for, Marco? One more. One more. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Um, I think we're. Um, uh, Anthony, Elizabeth, everybody comment very well. And I don't want it to repeat. That would be unfair for my part to do that. And uh, the only thing I had to add it, Todd, is your renderings. I know that you try to do in computer. Mm -hmm. uh, rather to help you, they go against you. And that is very bad because it looks more grotesque, more heavier in, in the facade. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think I think I have to be fair with you that probably this is why they are very aggressive, the fellow community members. I respect their opinion, by the way. And this is why they comment very strong for that part. And, and they are right, by the way. So the second point that I would like to raise right here is, and that's where I brought this picture, is how wonderful it is to have a donut in the mid block. You look how how, pro how the surrounding buildings profit of these uh, donuts. They have an opportunity to have light ventilations. So to lose any real yard, I think is a crime. And I think this picture depicts my ideas, uh, uh, how grateful is to have a donut and to maintain and preserve the donut, I think is a paramount. And thank you so much. And that's it. Marco, thank you, Marco. So after Marco, we will move to our public members, unless you want to go to Lo and Jane first. Jane. Um, why don't we go to our public members, and then we'll have Lo and Jane. OK. So we'll so finish first, with everyone on the committee. OK, perfect. Um, Christina Davis, and then we'll move to Kim Selway. Hello, um, thank you for your presentation. I think <clears throat> one of the problems is with this wonderful presentation is <clears throat> it's it's such a larger space, 40 by 30, is that correct? Uh, and, 47 by 30. Yeah, it's a huge space. And so these stronger elements, I'm sure if we were standing there would look better than what we can see in this photo. So I really think it's difficult to envision, and I understand some of the concerns and comments of the members, but um, <clears throat> I, I think I can support this, and uh, I wish I could see it in context. Thank you. Thank you, Christina. Yeah, and thank you. I apologize for how primitive the renderings are. Um, Todd, we're just going to go to the next public member now. Thank sure. you. Kim. Thank you, Jane. Thank you, Will. Um, I will echo the sentiment of my colleagues around pre preference of the metal um, to the masonry. I think my one question is, Todd, I thought at the beginning of this presentation, and Jane, you can, of course, correct me if I'm misunderstanding. We had said that the, the fences had already been approved at a staff level. Can we be explicitly clear on what this committee is being asked? Um, to we're being asked to approve two things. 
One, the addition on the west and east sides of a two foot latticework fence to a brick wall that has been previously approved at the staff level of the commission. We are also being asked to approve the replacement of the metal elliptical Juliet balconies and the metal staircase and the metal balustrade coming down or the hand the railings coming down with um, masonry. Thank you. Those that are the two things. Thank you. No further questions. Thank you. So I think now, um, Will, we could go to Lowe, perhaps first Jane and then um, Lowe. Okay. Jane and Schwartz. then we'll go to David Halperin because he hasn't spoken yet. Okay, I just have a question um, regarding the metal versus the um, stone. What was the reason for not replacing the metal with metal? Oh, I think we've heard from the applicant um, that it's um, the applicant wants the stone work. Okay. You know, that's um, so I think now we can go to low. Okay, thank you, Jane. Hello, just confirm I'm muting on your screen. Hello, we can hear you. Hello. Is low there, Will? I thought I heard sounds, he's unmuted. Hello? Okay. okay. Uh, well, I think he's also on his phone. Um, we have two things here for, for Low. One is a phone and one is... Low, if you're on your phone, it's star six to unmute, please. There you go. Okay. Hello? Okay. You go. Thank you. Um, my name is Low Vanderbalk. I'm representing Carnegie Hill Neighbors. Um, I, we don't normally comment on the applications outside of Carnegie Hill, but this really did strike me as an important application, and and we are uh, we're we're concerned about the replacement of the metalwork in the rear with um with the balustrade with the uh, that that is made of of material other than metal and that looks bulky. I thought the comments, and, and these comments uh, are reflected in many of the, of the uh, members of the committee, especially I thought Anthony's comments were very good. Th this is a very serious architect, and th there may be a possibility that, that what is there now is original, but if not, I think uh, trying to replicate the original or staying with what is there now would be very valuable. I think that is what preservation is all about and this is a very special building as reflected by its owners and the architect who who less known but but an outstanding one he wrote the classic book on dutch colonial architecture and um i also w would wonder is the architect named in the application i i had some problems with that but in any case uh, we recommend that um that we that the that the the current proposal try to restore the metal work in the rear. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lo. David, how, David, your turn. <clears throat> Architecture is very often a question of choice. And in all deference, I think that Todd has made the wrong choice. I think that uh, most people instinctively understood that the metal balconies are the right thing. Uh, Anthony, uh, I think, explained it the best and maybe even using a little bit of architectonic language. But uh, essentially, Anthony pointed out how flat this building is. And I noticed that you tried to repeat the balusters from the front, but the balusters are part of the flatness on the front. This is not a sculptural building. And if I understand correctly, the stone is different from the stone that's on the building. It's not going to match. Uh, so it's going to look that much more uh, out of character and inappropriate uh, than as if it were at least uh, something that uh, felt as if it grew out of the building. Even with the same stone, I don't think it would be appropriate. 
I'm not going to repeat what everything Anthony said. I think he said it very well. Uh, it's simply uh, too bulky, too massive, uh, and uh, just not a good architectural composition. And in the final analysis, it has to be a good architectural composition, and this doesn't meet that test. So I will not support this. Thank you, David. My only comment, of course I agree, and I think Anthony made the brilliant point about the existing metal Juliet balconies are elliptical in shape. That one word elliptical says it all. I also, of course, don't really appreciate the new um, stone fence. There was much of the brick wall with the lattice work above. We have no choice. Staff level has approved this six foot high brick wall. I, of course, thought the lattice work um, had beautiful transparency and is so elegant always. It's lovely to add the fountain in the rear. But I, my sense is this is a disapproval um, unless somebody has another idea. I think it's a disapproval. Okay, so we're gonna go with the disapproval for the entire application. I do appreciate the thoroughness of the presentation. So um, the Jane, architect- I'm yes. sorry to interrupt. Uh, Michelle has her hand up. I didn't know if she maybe wanted to add a, a amendment to the resolution or- well, she, somebody else has to propose the resolution. Michelle? Yeah, what I wanted to say, I understand that the brick walls were approved at staff level, but I really um, hope that the committee can find its way to either writing a letter or including it in, this, in, the, in our resolution that we would have hoped that the brick walls came to us as well. I don't like them. I think it's very prison-like. Um, I would have liked to see the lattice remain. And I really wish we had an opportunity to comment on it. And I wonder if we can somehow get that message to landmarks because the more we let them know what we want to come to us, I think the better off we are. We've made points like that to them before, but I think it's important that we continue to make that point. The other thing is, why didn't the fountain come to us? Uh, was that approved at staff level as well? I yes, know. everything in the rear was approved at staff yeah. level, but well, Michelle, we I will tell so you, would, so we would, would put think. something in the resolution about preferring the lattice period instead of the brick wall. Okay, so I think we're great. ready for a vote unless we can get a, um, did somebody want to propose a resolution, a disapproval? I'll propose a resolution. And we need a seconder. I see Kim seconding it. Thank you. So we can go to a vote, Will, thank you. Okay, give me one second to get the vote sheet up and unmute all of the, um, unmute the committee members. Give me one second. I'm struggling with my computer. But we'll, we'll if be it unmuting. doesn't work well, we can just call the... Um... Oh, no, I, I, I have it now. I just... Oh, um... okay. We could just do it manually. Thank you. <laughs> all right. So um, we're going to have you all unmute. And I'm going to call the roll. So starting with Elizabeth Ashby. Yes. Oh, this is a disapproval. Sorry. Yes. Gail Barron. Yes. Thank you. Michelle? Yes. Alita? Yes. Sarah? Yes. Thank you. Anthony? Yes. David Helpern? Yes. Thank you. Jane? Yes. Thank you. Harrison? Yes. Marco? Yes. Christina? Yes. Thank you. And Kim? Yes. Thank you. All right, so that's unanimous disapproval.
Thank you, Will. It is an extraordinary building. I hope I pass it by all the time. So I think we did the right thing as a committee. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Next item, 900 Madison Avenue. Thank you. Thanks, Will, for the help. Yeah, of course. Is um, the architect here for 900 Madison? It's Cynthia and Geraldine. I'm here. I will okay. Be here. All right, so let me just introduce it. 900 Madison Avenue, Cynthia Ang architect, neo greek style 13-story apartment building with some classical detail, designed by Sylvan Bean and erected in 1939. Application is for ground floor partial limestone cladding at, cor at corner retail tenant with new signage plaques and recess recessed halo lit signage at corner. So we look forward to your presentation. Nice to meet you all. Um, my name is Cynthia A. I'm the architect for this project. We'll present, I'm presenting a proposal to uh, CLAD, the existing We need to share, we, we're not seeing it yet, Cynthia. Oh, sorry. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yeah, thank you. There you go, sorry. I got spoiled by Will sharing for the previous <laughs> presenter. Um, so here's a collage rendering of the proposal to clad the existing lower level stucco finish uh, with a limestone slab, um, partially honed finish, and at the corner where the signage is proposed, a hammered limestone finish. The limestone would match as closely as possible to the existing stucco color of the existing lower level. Um, the proposal is to create a more elevated architecture to the storefront in a light limestone color with as close a match to the existing stucco color as possible. Our proposal is referencing uh, New York City buildings, uh, which wrap around the corners by continuing the architectural intent of design uh, that was approved on March 17th, 2020. Uh, here it is. This is, uh, this is the designation photo on the Madison Avenue side. And here's a view of uh, 28 East 73rd, which is the wrapped corner. Pre previously was just a blank, um, blank with no openings. Um, and in 2010, it was approved to have uh, window openings, continuing the retail openings that were on Madison and wrapping around to 73rd Street. I'll go backwards a little bit and show you the location. We're located right here, corner of 73rd and Madison. Next slide is <clears throat> Google map visual. So you can see the height of the building and the adjacencies, which are lower, lower buildings. Here are some existing photos of the whole block collage on Madison Avenue. And we're located right here. It's unfortunately hard to get photos during the day without cars blocking the view. Um, around the corner is 73rd Street. And you would notice that it has the four proposed and approved windows uh, from 2010. And here's a view of uh, the build lower buildings across the street. Here are the designation photos again of the 13 story building. And here's some tax photos with the views of that corner on the left. 
uh, a view down, Mad uh, down Madison Avenue with the building, a little portion of it on the right and the entire building on the right photo. And here's some uh, reference for the limestone cladding. It was the other Madison Avenue limestone cladded storefronts that we see and reference as we walk up and down Madison in the landmarks portion of the district, such as 940 Madison, 790 Madison, uh, 1000 Madison, and 819 Madison. And here's some existing storefront images. This is that same corner. There's a view of 73rd Street in large. Here's the entry. And here's a rendering of the proposed corner uh, with the limestone cladding, the existing stucco. Oh, there's hammered limestone at the corner, which is only at the signage. So basically, this is sort of the signage proposal wrapping the corner. But the rest of it is uh, limestone slabs that are honed. All the existing frames will just be uh, refurbished and cleaned. The Siamese. Uh, connections are currently uh, bronze and we want to propose as well to upgrade those to a brush stainless finish to match the existing frames which are brush stainless finish. Next slide is a <clears throat> floor plan showing the dimension of the new cladded limestone at each pier, there are existing build outs, as you can see behind it. And in front of it, we want to propose to clad it with uh, the limestone, which is about six inches vertical at each of the piers mm -hmm. and at the corner. And here's a large view of that condition where you have a build out already behind the glazing and we're just proposing to clad in front of it. Here's the next slide with a proposed elevation showing the cladding. The lines indicate the existing details of the storefront in red and our the limestone is in slabs cladding over that. So here are the vertical six inch depth over the existing um, piers that are behind the glass. And it's continues and wraps around to 73rd Street, wrapping all the ex existing stucco up to our <coughs> the end of our store. And you see in the proposal, the laser cut signage at the corner, which is at the hammered finished limestone. We have the two plaques on either side of the entry with some window vinyls at each of the glazing. On the Madison Avenue side, we're gonna maintain the clear visual visibility into the store. Uh, on the 73rd Street side, there will be uh, graphics that will be uh, interchangeably changed out. They're temporary, but we also like to maintain as much visibility in the store as possible. Any type of graphics will be uh, allow light into the store, it will not be solid or opaque. Next few. Uh, Next slide is just more details showing you the change, different depths of this limestone. This is six inches and proud of the existing stucco. Um, and 
here it's four inches, so it varies. So there's undulation in the limestone character, so it's not completely flat. Next slide. I don't, I won't bore you with all the details, but there's a, a stone two is the hammered limestone. Stone one is the flat limestone, the home finish. At the corner is the hammered finish limestone. I want to mention also that there are existing security cameras that have been previously, previously approved. Uh, but we're relocating these security cameras to the far extremities of the storefront and uh, installing a uh, cover on them that better matches the limestone. Right now they're kind of a, a white, dirty white finish. The intent is to upgrade all the finishes at the storefront. Uh, next slide are just some proposed window sections that you can see at each window uh, where you have a clear view through the glass at each location. Um, here's the ent entry detail. You'll notice that here it's two inches proud. The cladding is six inches from from the bottom, but two inches up top, so it varies. Next slide, just some additional window sections. This is the sections through the 73rd Street side windows showing um, sheer blinds behind the windows. You'll be able to see through these sheer blinds so light will always come through the side windows. It won't be completely blocked. The next slide. Um, here's just some enlarged storefront plan details showing the different depths. Here's the six inches from the storefront framing. At the corner, it's three and a quarter. All the material at the storefront is intention is to just wrap over it or clad over everything, like a dressing. Uh, here's a large detail at the sill. So we would be wrapping around it so to cover the existing uh, stucco protrusion, install some aluminum studs, plywood and um, to protect the existing and install the new cladding. More details, this is a detail at the head. Uh, this would be the window at the top. We would have to have some flashing at the top of the storefront. This is the detail at the head of the storefront frame. We would be wrapping this, wrapping the cladding around it. We're trying to maintain the existing detail and moldings. Here is uh, the material board. Here's the limestone three quarter inch thick Slabs, home finish, as I mentioned, stone two is the limestone at the corner at signage. And the other material is the brush stainless, which is at the existing storefront frame at the proposed replacement of the Siamese, uh, Siamese uh, cladding. And Next slide is a large of the proposed signage. A couple of plaques on either side of the door in the brush stainless finish. You can see the detail in this rendering 
of the different depths of the limestone slabs. Here is that six inch vertical pilaster, which is in front of the sheetrock build out that's on the interior that will also be clad in limestone. So that it looks like inside and outside coexists. All the sills are also clad in the limestone and minimal seams, flush looking. And just some details of the proposed plaques, which will be pin mounted to the new limestone signage. And this is just a study a proposal of the signage that we want at the corner. Uh, option one, which they want to, we want a facelit sign inside of a laser cut logo into the proposed hammered finished limestone. Option two would be the halo lit at the corner. And this is just a reference of the halo lit of how it would look at that we've done at another store. Uh, last slides are enlarged detail photos of the existing storefront. As you can see, it's just, uh, you can see the detail of the wear of the stucco and the, de and the moldings. There's a view of the security cameras, which we're proposing to recover and reclad to a finish that will match the limestone. Uh, here are the stand pipes <clears throat> that we're proposing to replace with fresh stainless covers. And here are enlarged details of the existing storefront which we're just keeping and refurbishing. Mm -hmm. And there's just additional photos of the existing store. This is the Madison side and here's the 73rd Street side. And last but not least, we're just uh, proposing to replace the existing door handles with a uh, brush stainless steel door handle. And this, I believe I've covered the entire proposal. And thank you very much. We will now hear from the public. Will, has anybody raised their hands? Not yet, but this is a reminder that if you would like to comment on this presentation or ask questions of the presenter, you'll need to use the raise hand button that you can find under the reactions icon at the bottom of your screen. You may have to click more to find it. Um, and if you are on the phone, it is star nine to raise your hand. We've got a couple of seconds. Not seeing any questions from the public. On the assumption that that's not the public, <laughs> why don't we why don't we go to the committee, and uh, why don't we go in reverse order? We don't want right. to make Elizabeth uh, the first one every time. All right, we'll start with Marco, and then go up to Elizabeth. Right, and then we'll go to the public. And we'll wait for, Jane will wait for the end. Thank you, uh, David. Uh, um, I have to mention something. I have serious problems with my internet. I couldn't even uh, uh, see or hear the, the whole uh, presentation. However, I'm going to try to speak as much as the system allows it to speak or to be on uh, live. So I saw the metal store uh, handle the hollow lights, the signage at the entrance, I think I find it very attractive. And the, the only thing that made me serious concern is the hammer stone wrapping uh, at the corner. I find it a little bit too heavy. And um, 
And I think that's it. That I, I have to be very short in my comments today. Thank you. Thank you, Marco. Um, next would be Harrison. Yeah, so uh, thank you for the thorough presentation. Um, everything looks pretty good to me. It looks uh, attractive and it looks like it fits in well. Uh, and so I've got no complaints, so thank you. Thanks, Harrison. So we'll move up to Anthony. A large jump, sorry, Anthony. No, no, sorry, yeah, yeah. Um, it, a very, a very thorough presentation and a very thoroughly thought out project. I have a, a question and a comment or two comments maybe. Um, one is what happens at the end, um, at the end of everything where this, um, where your, um, your intervention bumps into the entrance of the apartment house? That was a question. Do we have an answer? Um, no. Cynthia? Oh, Cynthia. Hi, everyone. My name is Geraldine. I'm the head oh. of uh, design and construction of the frame. Oh, OK. Sorry, I was trying to unmute, and it wasn't working. So sometimes technology, even for us younger folks, doesn't really add up. Um, I can answer this. So the intention is to actually wrap around the cladding and uh, leave a quarter inch gap before it meets um, the existing store. So basically that, that detail will end with a shadow gap. And that will act as like the, the, the way that it meets around and then attaches to the existing storefront. Okay, so the ornament above the canopy remains uh, in place. That's correct. Okay. Um, and, and the, the, the comment, two comments, first comment is that, um, uh, is a kind of technical comment. I apologize. Um, miters at outside corners, uh, of, with limestone are fragile. And I worry that you will be unhappy in a year or two or less that the, um, that you start to get kind of a little cracking or something that would it just won't it will not hold up as well as a different kind of joint that has a sort of a, a thicker um a, a thicker presentation at the end um and and then the only other comment is that it's too bad that uh uh that that i mean not too bad for you but too bad that the blank wall on the on the north side of the building on the apartment house side of the building uh, was pierced uh, ten years ago. It's a, it, it was a it was an interesting and nice detail, and maybe one of the nicest things that Sylvan Bean ever did. But anyway, um, I I think on balance this is fine. Thank you. To answer that um, uh, about the mitered edges, so I've actually in my previous company I worked in length for many years with travertine, which I know is also um, as I mentioned, it was is kind of like a marble, but is actually mm -hmm family and we did do mitered corners quite frequently and the way that we integrated that detail is to actually chisel down the miter edge so that it's not a complete 90 degree angle but it's slightly offset at a 45 degree angle and that enables the limestone corner to, to actually withstand um, uh, the structure much more long term and then usually what they do is that they cork um, the interior gaps just for extra waterproofing and structure kind of visibility. But um, that's a good point. OK. So after Anthony, we have Sarah Chu. Hi. Um, I don't know if I missed this part of the presentation. And so if I'm asking you to repeat a uh, detail, I apologize. Um, I was wondering about the hammered, um, the, uh, the uh, the signage for the store and whether um, how that worked and how uh, if there was another business that moved into that location if they would need a brand new hammered um, uh, I forgot what it was um, uh, 
<laughs> whatever the, um, the material is, um, if they would need like a new piece of building to make a new sign. Yeah, that's actually a very good question. And we have addressed this with, um, with my designers. Um, there's really two options for this. The first one is that because we are really doing this cladding as like a dressing with the existing storefront, they could easily change over that particular limestone slab with the intention that again, because of the way it's constructed, the fact that the thing is different from the rest of the facade playing into the architecture and design. The other option as well, which is again, something that I've worked with with limestone and practicing in the past, is that it's a very easy stone to infill and make look very realistic. So it would be quite easy to actually remove that engravement and have it patched up so that it ends up like a flat slab. Got it, thank you so much. Welcome. After Sarah is Alita. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, so maybe I'm an outlier here, but it looks way too modern for me. The stainless, the the limestone without any decoration on it. I thought the molding of the stucco, um, those three semi-circular, whatever you call those bands around the top was a transitional element, even though the building in itself is not something that's particularly um, notable, it's it's a continuity and the, the length of the facade here makes it more apparent, the exact um, sharpness of it, the linearity of it. Um, and so I don't really, I have to say, it just doesn't feel appro appropriate. I know that's maybe a difficult location recently. Is that, that, is that where that drugstore was for a long time? And then something else went there and Millie was there and um, I don't know. And, and of course we want to support small businesses, but at the same time, um, while we do want to support small businesses, it's not, uh, it's not an ample reason to um, ignore impact. So that, that's just my sense of it, but I could see from what other people are saying that um, I'm, I may be out here by myself. <laughs> Thank you. Otherwise, I think you did a good job. I just feel like it's it's just too modern for um, for that area. And I know, and I because I walk by there a lot, so I know. And I was just by there over the weekend a couple of times. That a lot of the buildings surrounding it um, are the facades are different. And I'm sorry, I just said that thinking of 79th Street. I know you're on 73rd, but it just feels even more so because you have that church across the street and. It's, uh, it feels disruptive in a way, again, the length of it, but thank you. I'm done, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Alita. Next is Michelle. Yeah, thank you. You're not alone, Alita. I don't care for that element. Um, I think it's, it is very contemporary, but I also think it's contrived. It just, to me, I don't know. I mean, it was like, looking for a design as though the plainness of it wasn't adequate and it was to me artificial searching for what you could do to that corner but um, I don't think you need to do anything to that corner and I think that choice was to my mind uh, not appropriate and very contrived. In terms of the signage that's etched into it um, I would not want to see the shadow lighting, but just the etch, the etching would be fine. And as to my, the rest of the comments, I have to say you gave a very, very good and thorough presentation. So the fault is all mine, but I really couldn't follow all of it. So I'm going to have to ask you some more questions. Um, the windows are as they are. And my understanding is that any limestone that you're adding is going to be an overlay. So my understanding is that you've got stucco on the Madison facade and the 73rd Street facade and the, and the limestone is going to be laid over that stucco. So is that, did I understand that correctly? Yes, you did. Okay, that correct. so that's good. Um, now, in terms of what you're doing around the windows, do the windows have a surround now? And are you, I know you're putting limestone around the window, but are you changing the dimension? And if it's going on top of the existing stucco, is it 
protruding out so as to create a shadow bay of those windows? Uh, yes, I'll go to the detail of the storefront, the large detail and section. So this is what you're talking about where you have I to am- you have to share, please. We, we, we lost your oh, share. You have to share into Zoom. Uh, I lost the sharing ability. You can well, try again now. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So here is, as you were talking about the window frame, this is the frame and yes, part of it will be covering it because I'm going over the existing uh, stucco profile. So it does at the sill protrude a couple of inches and I'm wrapping over it. So then does that create, do the windows now look like shadow boxes? Uh, let me go to a better view of the windows in the rendering. They, they won't look like shadow boxes uh, per se. It's, it will be uh, framed out. I'm looking for the better so the windows will be approximately two inches recessed. Is that what you're saying? Yes, it will be recessed. It is recessed now, but it will just be recessed a little bit more. Can you see? Yeah, yeah, I see it. Thank you. Um, now, are you going back and forth between the, um, the, the pebbled limestone and the, and the flat limestone? Uh, the flat limestone is everywhere except at the corner where the laser cut signs are. It looks like it's pebbled on these overlays here uh, where, where your signage oh. is, where it says frame. Uh, it's not. It's, it was meant to be honed, and that's just the matter of the rendering. Oh, it's meant okay. to be a honed, smooth finish. Um, and we only have at the corner the hammered at the signage. Yeah. Okay, and the treatment, this is my last question, the treatment going around 73rd Street, this, so those windows are all gonna be recessed also. Even though uh, they are now, they will be more recessed. Yes, by a couple of more inches, yes. Okay, now you have a stainless steel, I'm sorry, it's not my last question. You have stainless steel framing there that I'm looking at. Did that exist before the metal or are you adding that? It's, it's all existing. We're maintaining all the existing framing and just uh, cleaning it or refurbishing it. Mm -hmm. And these are uh, new frames that were added on the 73rd Street side in 2010. And how about on Madison? Um, Madison, let me uh, go to the existing photos. But yeah, they're fairly new as well, the Madison framing. And the round um, moldings atop, that's, that was that's, there and it's remaining? Yes, it's remaining. It'll be just concealed under our cladding. Oh, so um, you're cladding over it? Yeah, the detail is uh, at the head. Well, you're keeping the same, wait, wait let me understand. Here's you're, the cladding. You're keeping the same profile, but you're putting limestone on top of this stucco? Correct. We're covering the existing stucco. But you're not changing the shape that it's like three moldings. We're not changing it. We're just covering it. Mm -hmm. Well, that's interesting. I don't know. How, how do you do that with limestone? Um, so here's the detail. We're just uh, wrapping it up top and bottom with uh, plywood and then adding with stone anchors our limestone uh, slabs. Okay, but it's still going to look like three round moldings, one on top of the other. Well, they're going to be concealed. You won't see it. Oh, well, that's my question. I'm interested in what you'll see. You'll see flat limestone. You won't okay. see the, yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. That's Michelle. Next, we have Gail Barron. Good evening. Thank you for your very detailed presentation. 
My colleagues have asked most of the questions that I have, but my one question has to do with the halo lit sign. Could you show me exactly where that is? And is, is it only one sign that's going to uh, be? It would be both signs at this corner where you see the etch frame. So on the Madison and on 73rd, that's where it would go right here. Mm -hmm. I assume that the signs will be lit all evening or all night? I'll be on the time clock. So it will turn off at a certain time. And how much light does a halo lit sign like that project? Um, it would be very light. Let me show you the effect that they're looking for. It's. It's just basically a glow. And when it's actually inset into the laser cut, you'll see even less of it. It's just gonna be creating a, a, a shadow basically at the corner. So it just glow slightly because the letters will be inside the laser cut of the limestone and inset. Okay, thank you. That's my You're only welcome. question. Thank you, Gail. Next is Elizabeth Ashby. Yeah. Uh, this seems perfectly acceptable to me. This is not a great building. Um, in fact, with this architect, we can thank the gods of architecture that he didn't make it in white brick, which is one of his favorite materials. Uh, and I think uh, on this uh, building, which is not a classical building, uh, this limestone is, and this treatment is perfectly okay. Great, right, thank you. Thanks, Elizabeth. So we'll move to Kim Selway and then Christina Davis. Hi, thanks, Will. Thank you, David. Um, most of my questions have already been addressed by the rest of the committee. I was curious on um, one of the, or a couple of the slides about how this cladding will be attached to this corner. It seems like it's minimal hardware that's going into the original building, but could you just explain a bit about how deep that's going into the building? Uh, let's show the... It was page 18 from what I have. The PDF. Here, this yeah. is page eighteen. Yeah, it'll be it'll be a couple of inches. Uh, this is at least a, a two-inch screw, uh, screwing into some metal studs with plywood, uh, with stone anchors mounted to the plywood, and into the stone, with a uh, with a tile setting bed between the plywood and the stone slabs. Um, yeah, it's going to be fairly minimal. And if we have to remove it, you could uh, very easily infill that stucco with no no problem. Okay, that addresses my questions. Thank you. You're welcome. And then Christina Davis is our last public member. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Um, thank you. I um, I like what you've done, and I interpreted the cladding at the corner as sort of a play on your brand name as a frame, and I think I thought it was really clever. And I like. Uh, yeah, that's correct. <laughs> it so is. I can congratulate you on that. And um, seventy third and Madison. And I like your clothes, so thank you very much. That Fourth Street corner. I think what they're doing was so going to get his ice cream. Mm -hmm. David and Jane? Jane, I guess you might have an opinion. Um, I, I appreciate what Elizabeth said, and I'm probably going to vote for it. Thank you. <clears throat> I think Elizabeth hit the nail on the head. This is a very simple building, it's a very little embellishment. It's just punched in windows into brick. Uh, and uh, I think that the uh, Somebody who said that this is a contrived design. Well, in some sense, you could say any design is contrived. 
Uh, I think that uh, what's been done here is uh, sort of a joyous look at this corner. Uh, I think the limestone is an appropriate material uh, as the base for this building. I think that the juxtaposition of this uh, modern, uh, very much of the moment uh, design versus the very simple brick building is uh, far more compatible from a time point of view than some of the designs you see on Madison Avenue where you have buildings that are 19th century buildings with fronts that uh, are just this contemporary. So I don't think objecting to it on that basis uh, is a fair objection. Um, <clears throat> I think that the way the windows are handled gives it a nice 3D quality. Uh, we're so used to seeing everything either flush as it's being done on the Metropolitan these days or with uh, the old mullion caps. Uh, and I think this uh, is a sort of a refreshing look at how to do windows. And last but not least, uh, as uh, the question was well answered, this is reversible. And uh, Landmark stock loves nothing more than reversible uh, designs. So not that you wanna reverse it to what was there before, but it's obviously easy to remove and replace. Uh, so from that point of view, uh, its reversibility I think is a plus. Uh, the only thing I would say is the point that Anthony brought up. Uh, you should draw what you intend. And uh, the, the miter joint is really uh, susceptible. And uh, the way you've described what you intend to do with it uh, makes a lot of sense. But then you have to follow that through. And I'll assume that that will be followed through. Also, yes. also the fact that uh, you're playing with different layers and the whole idea of layers is a way a lot of people think about architecture today. Uh, I think that that makes it even easier to uh, work out uh, carrying through uh, the way you handle the miter. In any event, I think you thought it through well. I think it'll be a fun design on Madison Avenue. I think it'll be an appropriate design. It certainly has my full support. Thank you. Thank you. So um, we need a resolution. It sounds like it's a little bit more in favor than not, but somebody should make it other than me. Well, I'll try to get my hand up, but I don't know how to do that. M move to approve. Need a second? Kim second, Marcella. Kimberly. Okay, so please call the roll, Will. Okay. You should see my screen now. Yes. And we're going to call the roll uh, and unmute all of the board members. So starting with Elizabeth Ashby. Yes. Gail Barron. Yes. Michelle. Um, yes. Thank you. Alita? I actually I had my hand up before. Is it possible, David, to just see the image of the whole building with the windows there again, please? Because I'm on the fence here. Alita. This is, that's an unusual request. We, we're in the middle of voting. I know I had my hand up way before voting or a little before voting. Well, if we missed, if no, we missed, if we missed your hand, then I think Will can take a moment to put on the overview of the building. Thank you, David. Um, I'm going to defer to Cynthia, who'd actually been sharing her screen. Okay. Uh, and thank you, Cynthia. Uh, and thank you, Will. No problem. Okay. Uh, that's it. Okay. okay. I'll vote. Right. I'll, okay, I'm ready to vote then. Thank you. You're welcome. Back to you, Will. Thank you so much. Sorry. I appreciate it. Okay. Um, Alita. I'll vote yes. Thank you. Sarah Chu. 
Yes. I'm sorry, Sarah. Thank you, sorry, I was, I messed up the muting. Uh, yes, please. Yes, okay, thank you. And then Anthony? Yes. Thank you. David? Yes. Jane? Yes. Harrison? Yeah. Thank you. Marco? Make sure Marco's unmuted. Yes. Oh, thank you. Christina? Yes. Oh, we heard you, Marco. Thank you. Christina, are you unmuted? Yes. Yes. Yes, thank you, Christina. I don't know who's banging in the kitchen. I don't know either. We'll get there. Um, and then Kimberly. Yes. Thank you. So unanimous. OK, thank you, Will. Dan, I, we'll go I back, back to you. Box. Yeah. Now, I just wanted to um, let the committee know that I will make a point about how the committee wished the brick wall had come to us um, as part of the application and that landmarks should recognize how important the entire design for that rear yard was to the committee or is to the committee and should have been addressed by all of us. Jane, you want to handle whatever's next or just pay? Well, I don't know of any new business. Um, is there any new business? Uh, Lita has her hand up, and I think another person chatted me earlier about a okay. item of new business. So Okay, Alita. Thanks, Jane. I'd actually like to request that your letter about the staff approval for that home be expanded to just include, again, another statement about staff approvals being done inappropriately and without regard for community input, that there ought to be an opportunity for the community to weigh in. That water feature sitting, it looked like it was sitting on top of the fence that went from see-through to solid brick are major design changes and impact the people back there, as well as the nature of the building and the impression that it leaves. and. There's supposed to be a mechanism for community input. There just isn't one that I know of and we should ask for it. And this is a good opportunity to basically reiterate the last letter in a different form again. Um, Alita, I was going to put that in the resolution. I didn't intend for it to be a letter. I was just gonna put some very Thank strong wording in the resolution. I know, I was just, I was asking for something for something more inclusive and stronger again, so that, so that- Well, do you want to draft something, Alita? I know you did the original letter, maybe you could draft a letter, but I'm still going to put something in the resolution. Yeah. No, I'm not disagreeing with you there. I just feel that maybe the squeaky wheel, eventually they'll get the, the idea of um, staff approvals needing some kind of community focus. Thank you. Well, that would be great if you do a draft and David and I'll go over it. We'll go over it. Just, you know, we have to know where we want to make our stand. The fact yeah. of the matter is, this is private property. I think we have to be careful when we go to landmarks and make big issues because the staff level has got to have guidelines. And uh, if we want to get into the whole issue of changing the guidelines, uh, then I think that's a different issue than just saying it has to come to us because uh, it goes beyond uh, the guidelines to changing the guidelines, to saying that the guidelines don't apply, that everything should come to us. I mean, I'm, I'm just, I understand where you're at, Alita, but I just want you to understand the road you're going down. I understand, but when there, and I was down there for both um, sets of rules. For the first one, the outstanding and overwhelming public opposition um, was because they were cutting off, I believe, um, public input into the staff level process. And when they came out with a new version of the rules, it was supposed to have, I believe it was supposed to have included some kind of provision for community input that the LPC couldn't just take 
um, what otherwise had gone to the community, even though Sarah Carroll had said that the staff was approving the same numbers of things, it just seems even for the water feature perched on top of the fence that that's a major um, addition to the to the property and the view of, I, I am sorry, I'm out of words tonight. So it just seems that asking again, not to change the rules, um, not to modify them in any way, but to say these, they, they are deciding some pretty big issues and just to say that there should be an opportunity for the community to weigh in. Maybe no one in the community would have objected to the fence, but it's big enough to go into Jane's, into our resolution. So that's- Well, I'm just gonna mention it. I think David has a, a very good point that we have to choose our battles. And as the architect said, this is at the ground level. It's totally invisible from the public way. But I will make the point in the resolution. And then if you want to do some kind of a draft, Alita, David and I will review it. Of course. And I, I would expect and anticipate that you would come with sharp knives. So I will. Thank you for the Alita, opportunity. Alita, just for the record, I certainly uh, have been with you on balance on the need for uh, more input from our committee and the community in a variety of ways. Uh, I just think you have to know, as Jane said, where you draw your battles, where you where, where you really go to, to fight for something. I agree. And this is not to fight for a review of the brick wall. It's it's the principle of it. And that's why I was suggesting a letter. And David, the knives are only about your editing prowess, not about anything else. Thank you, Alita. Thank you. Anything else? Anybody else had some new business? We have one uh, one person from the public, Stephen Martin. Stephen, you'll have to confirm on muting. There you go. Great. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Hi. Um, I just wanted to introduce myself. My name is Stephen Martin, and I represent a new nonprofit on Roseville Island called Friends of the Ruin. And we are advocating for the, the full stabilization of the landmark smallpox hospital on the southern tip of Roseville Island. And I really just wanted to introduce the project to you um, and let you know kind of we're here and we really feel that this building needs kind of a, a wonderful and thorough stabilization um, for its longevity. You can imagine, you know, especially now in COVID, it's hard to imagine a more fitting place to memorialize the incredible works with regards to public health. It was our country's very first hospital dedicated to the smallpox pandemic. And then it served for 60 years as a nursing school, really kind of charging um, the front lines and then has been kind of an evocative ruin for the past 70 years. Um, so I just, I really, you know, I feel so um, kind of, I, I have by no means the technical wherewithal to be speaking to you but I just wanted to say we're here and we really feel this is such an important building with regards to kind of what we're going through today. Um, so I don't know if this is technically new business or just really a, a friendly introduction. My name is Steven, um, where you can find out more information at theruin.org. Um, and yeah, I d this is just a hello. <laughs> Stephen, do you know what the status is? Because there was an RFP half a dozen years ago that they were going yeah. to move forward with some of the uh, uh, restoration and refurbishing work. And originally that was supposed to be handled as part of the uh, FDR memorial. Right. So actually, I used to work at the FDR memorial and I was the person that, that led that charge. Um, and so we've completed kind of early studies with um, to figure out how do we best stabilize this. And we're on our kind of our second round of studies right now. Those are funded by the state um, through the regional economic development councils. And so we're, we have kind of a team of engineers and soil scientists and historians and archeologists on site really to figure out how do we, you know, this is what we, this is very much an active ruin. Um, it's been patched and band-aid, bandaged over, you know, many, many, many years. Um, but as you can imagine, storms like Hurricane Sandy took out, you know, interior brick walls and 
um, you know, we, it's been shored and will continue to be shored. So we just, we feel that it needs a very thorough, um, robust, um, uh, you know, permanent stabilization. We would love to see it you know, beautifully landscaped and really serve as kind of a memorial to public health as kind of, as very much uh, a garden among ruins um, that you could, you know, the public could walk through and experience as a ruin. You know, no one's really gotten to experience it for decades. And so that that is our goal. It would be a beautiful ruin. I assume that the structural stability is okay because I know that Silman's office did that a long time ago, right. although maybe it's not lasted. Uh, but right. what are you going to do about the visitor center for, for the FDR Memorial? Um, the, actually, the Four Freedoms Park Memorial, they've decided to no longer, um, you know, move forward as on a visitor center. Really, oh, they've just focused. Really news. I can't stand visitor centers at any of Neither the can I. Federal <laughs> Neither can I. Well, I'm, just, I'm just as happy not to have it, but making use of the original, of the original right. hospital. I didn't, mean, I didn't mean to interject, David. Sorry. No, Jane, I feel the same way. And, um, you know, I really think it deserves to be in the hands of the public as a ruin. It's our, it's a city's landmark ruin. And the idea of building a new structure within it or new architecture within it, you know, it's kind of standing so stubbornly against everything that is glittery and glass and concrete, you know, to, what to experience it as a landscaped, beautiful landmark ruin, I think would be a very special experience for New Yorkers. Well, but would let also... me ask you this. What is yeah. the immediate next step? Well, we, um, you know, we're, we're applying for money from the city, state, and federal government to, to, do, to further these studies. It's going to need a serious capital campaign. There's a lot of work around that. Um, and we've, you know, we've established a nonprofit to do so. And we're working closely, of course, with Four Freedoms Park, of course, with Cornell Technion and the Roosevelt Island Operating Corporation. You know, there are special partners on the island. You can imagine New York City Health and Hospital and the Carter Burden Center, for example, who have been doing so much at, in terms of kind of public health and at the front lines. Um, so that, we're, you know, I'm just, I'm, I feel kind of, I feel very honored to speak with you about this because I think it's just such a, an important landmark. But I also think, you know, when you think of everything New York City has been through, it's really hard to imagine a more fitting site to memorialize everything we've gone through. Well, we so appreciate your coming. I think it might be useful perhaps under new business at our next meeting to present some visuals so that we Oh, I'd be happy to. And maybe we, we can just say that for our next step with the Landmarks Committee. I don't know what we could do. You know, the committee usually, we could pass a resolution, I suppose, which we could do at our next meeting. Couldn't we, David, if we saw some visuals? <laughs> I, think we, I think we could pass a resolution. I think uh, Stephen's uh, description of what they're thinking about is a wonderful idea. And if we agree as a committee, I think we could pass a resolution and then we could even do it as a community board. Yeah, okay. So why don't we go that route, perhaps at our March meeting? <clears throat> okay. Uh, you could do a, 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 some visuals for us, a little tiny, more tighter presentation that included some visuals. Absolutely. Yeah, I would be happy to. And um, just so for so you know, you know, Lynn Shinazaki, we presented a couple weeks ago to the Roseville Island Committee as well. You can imagine they they feel very protective of this building. And, um, you know, there was a real excitement there as well, just that finally there would be real strides to to getting this in place. So thank you. And yes, I would be happy to do so at March. I think we'll also just kind of present this to the parks committee soon. And, you know, we feel this could be a memorial park almost in a sense, if you think of it as public space. So um, that's where we are. And I'd be more than delighted to present this in March. Just a five minute, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Something. Yeah, something very short. Well, great. Well, thank you so much for coming. I know Will Brightville did send David and I um, some information and we knew that you'd presented to the Roosevelt Island Committee. And um, Oh, good. So thank you so much for coming. Yeah, I'm sorry my camera's not on, but it was a delight <laughs> to hear everything and to see you all. Thank you. Um, 
is that it, Will? Can we have a move to adjourn or? Michelle has her hand up maybe to do that. Oh, Michelle. I was just going to say that I'm thrilled to hear about this, um, but I just have two questions. Number one, is it a federal landmark? And number two, will the refurbishing and stabilization include the, in the interior as well as the exterior? I don't think they're that far yet, Michelle, but... Well, but they may have a, a thought or a plan if... if um, uh, if he could adjust that, Steve, Steve. Sure. Yeah, that. sure. Yep. It's a federal state and city landmark. Um, and, you know, it, it would be actually pretty challenging to restore it, the, the interiors. Um, they're really, we, you know, as hard as we have searched, there are no existing drawings of the, of, of the kind of the original James Renwick's from 1856. Um, so we really feel like it, it, it deserves to be a, a, a garden ruin, you know, the, the evocative see-through qualities, the sunlight streaming from above. We feel, you know, it, it kind of deserves that place as a, as a landmark, a ruin, and a garden. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Is there a move to adjourn or is there something else? Oh, moved. Uh, Gail has her hand up just to confirm that that's what she was doing. She was. Thank you, Gail. Thank you, everyone. It's uh, one last comment on that house in the rear yard. You know, the house is owned by a member of the Lauder family. And you know what an influential family they are. And I wonder how much, it, you know, it's just interesting to me as a footnote. Well, as a footnote, uh, James, sorry to interrupt, but if it belongs to the Lauder family, then I can't believe that they're doing what they're doing. Given well, it's interest interesting. In the that arts. Was, uh, I know it's shocking, actually. Okay, and Anthony, thank you. The elliptical wrought iron, original Juliet balconies. Thank you, everyone. We'll see you next month, if not sooner. Okay. Goodbye. Good night, everybody.